Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. What's the value of value objects? Well, some of the characteristics of being explicit domain concepts, immutable, and always in a valid state are really helpful. What's interesting is you could say the same thing for messages, such as commands and events in a message or event-driven architecture. I often see the two mixed together, and I'll explain why that's not a great idea. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design, so if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. At any point you find this video helpful, make sure to give a thumbs up and leave a comment. So let's talk about value objects a little bit and some of their characteristics that really define them is that they're explicit. You're defining explicit domain concepts. And I'll be showing some examples here in a second. And like I did a video on having always valid domain models, a part of your domain model are value objects. And that's one of the other benefits is that they're always in a valid state. As with anything that's immutable, it's great because you can't get in an invalid state. You're starting from a valid state right from the beginning. So at no point are you able to change, uh, modify, and mutate uh, a value object. Oftentimes you'll have value objects return other instances of value objects with however denoted you want to. Again, I'll show an example. And they're defined by their value. So that means that their actual contents are really what identify them. There's no necessarily identifier for a value object. Really the contents um, and the data in the value objects are really what define it. And in terms of quality, that means that if all the properties of all the data of one value object are the same as another, that means that both value objects are the same or they contain the same value or they're, they're equal to each other. And lastly, the, probably the thing that isn't used enough, I think, in value objects is actually defining behavior. So rather than just being types that have data with, held within inside of them and they have equality, um, being able to add behavior related to your value objects. So the most common example used when kind of explaining value objects is always of a customer and an address. So let's say we have a customer, which is an entity, and let's say living within our CRM, and the customer entity has an address. Well, the address is a value object. And the reason being is because you're not likely going to mutate the address. You're going to be replacing it completely within a customer. You're not going to go just change what the city is as an address. That doesn't really necessarily make sense. You're going to be training, uh, changing and updating the address as a whole. So in this case, our address is a value object. It has no identity, really. Its, its values are defined by the street, the city, the state, the country, and the postal code. That's what makes up an address, and you're not going to mutate it. Another really good example is of money. If you have a concept of money that's just a decimal and you're in kind of a multi-currency environment, then how you define that? Really money by itself just as a decimal doesn't really make sense. So really what you want to do is define money as a contract, as a concept that always has a currency with it. So what I've defined here is I have a record of money and it takes a currency. I didn't make currency a string. I'm making currency, again, something that's a concept that you're defining with a symbol. And I've defined in this case, having Canadian uh, dollars and American dollars. So in this case, again, I have a test here, which is just showing if I have two instances of money that's Canadian at $100, they basically are equal because they're equal by their value. Another good example of this is distance. So I have a distance value object that accepts the unit of measure, which could be kilometers or miles, and then a value, which is the actual distance. And then what we can do from there is expose behaviors to return new instances of the distance converted to whatever other unit measure we like. Value objects are great. They're explicit domain concepts that are immutable, always in a valid state, and are defined entirely by their value. Commands and events and messaging sound very similar to value objects. So can you put a value object within a command or an event? So the example I have here is of a place order command where it has a customer ID, which is just a GUID, a product, which is a value object, a quantity, which is just an integer, and the currency, which is also a value object. The issue here is that product and currency are explicit domain concepts we've defined within this boundary. Commands and events are often used within other boundaries. That means that if we're gonna put a product and currency in a command or event, we're now leaking explicit details about our domain. Now you're gonna to have to think about versioning if you wanna change product or currency. Your domain model is gonna evolve. It's gonna change. It's gonna mutate. You wanna be able to change product currency as you see fit. 
Your message contracts are one thing. Those are things that you want to expose. They're essentially DTOs. Those things are going to version. But within your actual domain concepts, you want to be able to change them as you see fit. So with messages like commands or events, you can still have the same characteristics of being immutable, always in a valid state. And by doing so, my place order command now, it takes the customer ID, which is a GUID. It takes the product SKU, which is a string, the integer of a quantity. And rather than taking the currency value object, we're taking a symbol. And then I have different overloads for the constructor to always make sure we're in a valid state. That doesn't mean you just need to use primitives within your messages. You can create types that look very, very similar to your value objects, but you're using within your messages that are gonna serialize properly. So in this particular case, I don't, I'm not using the currency value object, but I have a place order currency, which looks very, very similar to that value object where it just takes a symbol. I have a default that's set to USD. And again, this is something we can version separately from our value object. Be careful of leaking domain concepts. Value objects are as much as a domain concept as entities. And although messages feel very similar to value objects in that they're immutable and always in a valid state, they have different requirements and they live at a different level. Messages are contracts. They need to be a little bit more stable. Value objects and entities, as you discover things, as you get different insights, things are gonna change. Again, you want messages to be a little bit more stable. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, please leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.